relationship advice. Update, is it so bad to take the low road for once? She cheated on me and I want her to feel like I do. You see all the people in your life do messed up stuff, like cheat on the person they supposedly love, and you always think that'll never happen to you. Until it does, and feels like you've never known the type of pain before. I can't stand it and it's eating me. How badly it hurts. I gave my heart to her and wasted 6 years of my life on her, thinking we'll always be together. We were even talking about getting engaged. She was so serious about us getting married and starting a family. We were making all these plans, so how could I think she would ever do something like this to me? All those plans blew up a week ago. I was supposed to drive to my parents house an hour away after getting off from work early, because my dad was going to need someone to drive him to the airport. Soon as I was out of work, I got a text from my mom saying she was able to get her coworker to cover her shift, so she could take my dad after all. Called my girlfriend to let her know I was coming home instead, but she never answered. When I got home, I realized why. I don't know how it is for other people who've caught their significant others cheating, if it hurts more either catching them in the actual act of cheating, or just learning that they are. I'm guessing first one, because it nearly killed me seeing her with some other guy in the bed we've slept together in, for the past four years. Of course I heard the BS they always say, I'm so sorry, please, can we talk? It didn't mean anything, I love you. What does it matter if it freaking meant something? Why why why, is that always the freaking line they use? I don't give a damn if it didn't mean anything. Why would it make me feel any better? I walked out with her crying, and telling me not to leave, like I was the one hurting her. Spent the night at my buddy's place and we talked two days later. During our talk, I told her if she said the complete truth, then I might consider us working out our relationship. But not if I sense she's not being totally honest with me, I was lying though, didn't have plans to get back together, but I just needed to know how long it's been going on. She said she's been cheating on and off for two years, same guy. I'm even more heartbroken. For two years she lied to me and violated my trust, and slept with someone else when I spent years being faithful to her. She wanted to marry me and have kids with me, when she knew all along how badly she was hurting me. That was all I could hear. I told her to get the hell out of my house. She cried when she went to pack some stuff. Since then, I got calls and texts telling me she loves me and can't live without me, and she wants to make the relationship work and she'll do anything. Stuff like letting me have total access to her phone, do couples counseling, and will even call the guy in front of me to officially end it. It feels too late for apologies, but I still can't get rid of the pain. The image of her in our bed with another guy, is all I can think about. I have been sleeping on the couch, because I can't think of being on that bed again. Yesterday, I called an old friend I hadn't talked to in a while. And she's more than an old friend. We used to sleep together regularly, but never anything romantic cause she's in an open relationship with her boyfriend. But we stopped talking when I got with my girlfriend, after she learned we were FWBs and didn't feel comfortable with us spending time together, the hypocrisy. I understood where my girl was coming from, and so did my friend. So we agreed to keep our distance and not talk. My friend said she was a witch for cheating on me after I told her everything, and asked if I was feeling up to it, maybe we could have intercourse to get back at my ex. Cause here's the thing, my girlfriend was always really self-conscious about my friend after she learned we used to have sleep together, and used to say my friend is way prettier than she is. That always made her worry, that maybe I found my friend more attractive than her. Anytime she said that, I'd tell her that's not true, but whatever. She just started to feel very insecure until I stopped communication with my friend. My friend knows all this, and that's why she says this will be a good way to get back at her by hooking up with the one girl she always felt insecure about, and I agree it would be good petty revenge. But I told her no at the time. She said if I change my mind, she'll be up to it. Now I'm sitting here thinking about it, and I hate to say it but... I really want to. All this pain she's causing me, it's hard to describe it. But I just want her to feel some of it too. I want her to feel crushed like I was feeling, like I was somehow inadequate in the relationship that it drove her to cheat, and I know it's her fault, but it still messes with my self-esteem. I feel so much rage inside me, and I want to let it out. I did so much for our relationship, I thought we could work, and she messed it up. I want her to feel the pain I feel so bad. And look, I know it's not a healthy response and I'm probably a piece of crap for even thinking it, but is it really such a bad thing to take the low road for once in my life? It's probably the beer talking because I've had a few, but I so badly want to ruin her like she's ruined me. Now for the top advice before reading the update. 
Given the situation you described, I think that if you want to sleep with your friend, you should. I only say that because it sounds like you already have no intention of getting back with your GF, and your friend is in an open relationship. However, here is the flaw in your plan. Anyone capable of cheating on you for years, never felt the love for you that you did for her. The pain you cause her by sleeping with your friend, will be hardly a scratch. It's like her hitting you with a blizzard and you throwing a snowball at her. She is just not capable of feeling the pain you felt. Sure, she might wail and cry, but those are just the sounds all cheaters make when they feel sorry for themselves. They are not hurt by your actions. They are hurt that they wanted to have their cake and eat it too, and you took away their cake. Sleeping with a friend, is kind of a silly way to get back at her though. What are they going to do, invite her to watch? Better to take her out for some very ostentatiously romantic dates, with friends boyfriends approval as to why and how it's not really a romance thing, and then post pics online for the ex to run across. Then she's also not a revenge lay, and he doesn't feel like a pity lay. It hurts to be cheated on. Full stop. You'll get over it. In the meantime, take care of yourself and treat yourself well. Trying to get back at her, worrying about her not feeling as hurt as you do, is just wasting even more time on a person who no longer deserves your time, attention, or energy. Go sleep with your friend if it makes you feel better, but do it to make yourself feel better. Don't waste any more effort on that dead relationship. Agreed. Do it if it will help you, not just because it will hurt her. If you do it only for that reason, hurting her, it might make you feel worse, speaking from experience here. In counseling, they often tell you after being cheated on to not make any decisions for several weeks, because you're traumatized and shocked, and might not make good decisions, or ones you won't regret later. I'm so sorry this happened. Be good to yourself. Take your time. Hugs. Hi. As a girl having read your post, I can tell you to do one better that will sting a lot more, be successful. I know if my ex hooked up with an old flame right after we broke up, I'd be like, ha, he's so desperate that he hooked up with the first girl that would give him the time of day. That is how this situation can come off to her and that will only make her feel better about what she did slash justify what she did, he's a man who, so the relationship wouldn't have lasted anyway. Work on yourself, have an internal or external glow up. All of your friends will talk about how great you're doing. Maybe you meet a nice girl one day and have a real relationship. That will hurt her more. That will have her stalking your social media till she's on her deathbed. Or better yet, delete social media. She won't be able to find any trace of you and it will drive her insane. I've done it. It works. Go be your best self dude. And now for the update. It's been a while since I posted here. Honestly, I want to thank everyone who commented. I was in a really bad place when I posted this and your support really lifted me up, especially everyone who DM'd me with their own stories, and making me feel like I've got a whole community who knows what I'm going through and have my back. You don't know how much that meant to me. It's been a few months and I'm slowly doing better. I'm keeping busy with work started working out more, and going out for runs just to get all that energy out. Someone suggested I take up a hobby like a boxing class, which I think I'll do when COVID allows it. For now, I've got a punching bag hung up outside and I'm trying to teach myself the basics through YouTube lol. My heart still hurts, and I've still got days where I'm really depressed. This is someone I spent 6 years of my life with after all. My ex is long gone. She kept begging me for another chance, and wanted to do therapy to get our relationship back on track so we can build that trust again. I had to block her after a while. As for our friends, I told them everything before she tried to turn this on me. They were all really supportive, and almost all of them except for two cut her out as a friend. That really meant a lot to me to at least know I wasn't going to lose more than just her, except for my two other friends of course. A few of them even offered to come to my house and help me pack up her stuff so I wouldn't have to do it myself. We threw out my old bed and I was finally able to sleep in my room again after staying on the couch for weeks, because I couldn't stand to sleep where she cheated on me. I did have to rearrange everything in my room to be more comfortable. I don't know why, but it helped knowing nothing is where it was before. My two best friends were there with me when she came to pick up all her stuff. It was in a way satisfying to watch her load everything in her car all by herself, while we just watched her and had some beers. We definitely got messed up that night just to help me forget about her, and celebrate my ex officially being out of my life. As for my ex FWB, the one who offered to have ex with me and make sure my ex found out about it, I didn't end up doing that. Like some of you said, wasn't worth spending my time and energy like that. After a few weeks, I did take my friend up on her offer, 
minus the telling my ex part, and we've started our old arrangement again. Just another way to relieve some stress, and it's a bit of an ego boost if I'm being honest. Not ready to get back out there again. So this is good for now. That's all I have right now. My life ain't perfect, but I've been trying to slowly build things back up. I hate to say that I still miss her, but I know that'll eventually go away, the pain has started to after all, so I have hope. Thanks again for all your support and love, you guys really made my night when I first posted. Now for some comments. Congrats man, just keep doing what you're doing. This time next year it'll be a distant memory and a blessing in disguise. You're a single man with a regular F buddy, and some good friends, seems like you're well on your way to feeling damn good. Good job. You really did good for yourself, and I'm sure you'll be able to overcome this too. Best wishes towards the grief of loss and lies numbing, and a new, better love on the way. Thanks. Definitely doing a lot better than I was a few months ago, but still got ways to go. Now for the last story. Fiancé of 4 plus years caught doing crystals, cheating, and trying to pin a baby on me. New to Reddit, but thought it would help to write down what happened to me. Our story begins in spring of 2016, when I, currently 20 male, met a girl we'll call Rosie, currently 19 female. Well, me and Rosie immediately hit it off and began dating. Rosie was a shy and kind girl, but she had her demons. One thing that was bad about her is that, she always let the people around her influence her decisions. She also immediately became extremely jealous and forbid me from hanging out with female friends and going out to parties, unless I was with family. I said fine, but that I expected the same from her. Honestly looking back, the relationship became toxic pretty quickly. Her jealous nature and possessiveness eventually made me become the same way. Eventually, it led to worse things down the line. I always tried to understand her because her father abandoned her family. And her mother, brother, and grandma were all abusive towards her. Most of our relationship was long distance, since I'm originally from Mexico but work in the US, but we would text slash call slash video chat every single day for hours and hours. I went to visit her as frequently as possible, and we even lost our first time together. The whole time we were together, she always only wanted two things, to get out of her house, and a baby. We had our normal ups and downs as in any couple, and so we dated and remained strong year after year. Cut forward to about July 2020, and we are still in a somewhat toxic relationship. By this point, she had really changed me as a person. I became more cold and uncaring, since before when I was more sweet, she took advantage of me and would verbally abuse me. By this point, I had also become more aggressive and intense with her. I had been in the US for a while, saving up money so I could be with Rosie. Move in together and start a life together. One day, while we're talking on the phone as usual, she mentions that she wants to start working at a new place, greenhouses slash farming place. However, I say no, because that place is infamous for how toxic it is. Most of the people who work there are young, but involved in gangs, and are substance addicts slash alcoholics. Pretty much everyone who goes there, ends up badly. How do I know? Because I have family members that work slash work there, and came out addicts, alcoholics, pregnant, or all three. Well, she said fine I won't go. And that was that. Over the next several months, I noticed several changes in her schedule, her appearance, behavior, mannerisms, etc. Some days, she would take forever to answer messages and which she used to answer quickly. She would reject all my calls. Tell me she couldn't talk right now. She always had an excuse for everything. She would specifically tell me she needed to go at 8 p.m. every single night on the dot to quote, take a shower and take some medication, and would get aggressive if I didn't want her to leave yet. She began receiving strange friend requests on her social media, including one from a guy that seemed off. She was never the type of girl to want to add guys to her social media, but she was really really insistent on adding this one guy in particular. I asked why, and she said, because my mom says that he might be my cousin, it was a lie, but we'll get to that. She became very distant over time. Over all these months, I asked repeatedly what was going on and to just come clean, but she never did. Cut forward to last week, and I find out the horrible horrible truth from some family members slash friends. In July, she did start working there behind my back, but that's just the beginning. In August, she began hanging out with the wrong crowd. In September, she started talking to a guy we'll call Tony. Yup you guessed it, Tony is the guy from the friend request. Tony is a huge addict, and his family with local deal award. How do I know? 
Because at the time, he was dating one of my cousins who he also got addicted to D's. Well, I'm not sure of exactly when, but around that time, Rosie began using Crystal, as well as other substances, probably influenced by Tony. She created hidden social media accounts, and began using a secondary phone so she could text slash talk to Tony without me knowing about it. In October, Rosie began cheating on me with Tony, and Tony began cheating on my cousin with Rosie. In knew something had happened because three Fridays in a row, Rosie completely disappeared and ghosted me, with the excuse of visiting family, but in reality, she was more than likely getting high and drunk with Tony and her friends. Throughout November and December, she would randomly disappear some days, and ignore my calls and texts. By this point, I had become paranoid because I knew something was happening, but she always had an excuse and made me feel like I was crazy. I became depressed and more aggressive towards her because I knew she was lying, but she always denied everything, and said I saw things where there wasn't anything. But in reality, she had more than likely become Tony's new personal ex-toy. He would get her drunk and high then have his way with her, which he had done to many girls before her. The last six months of my life were a complete lie, and filled with manipulation. At least since October, every day she would get high, drunk, make out with Tony, and at night she would text slash call slash video chat with me. Sometimes while literally being there together with Tony, probably laughing at me. I know now for a fact she was with Tony sometimes when she was texting slash talking to me on the phone. Sometimes she would be outside her house talking, making out, and getting touched by Tony then would walk inside to video chat slash call me. I also know she would sneak out of her house with the excuse of going to hang out with friends, but in reality, she was going with Tony, more than likely to get high and have X. She also more than likely snuck him into her house to have X with him, since her mom always got home later than she did, and she had snuck me in in the past. A few times, I literally heard when they would tell her someone was looking for her, and when I asked who, it was she would say, oh, it was just some lady. No, it was Tony and she would probably just tell him to wait a little while she talked to me. The entire time I would constantly ask what was wrong, because I could see something was wrong. She was getting skinnier and skinnier, and her mannerisms and body language changed. She began dressing more and more revealing, before then, she had always dressed modestly. She would complain about being tired and sore, probably from being intimate with Tony. Sometimes when we video chatted her pupils would be dilated. A lot of days, she just seemed out of it and would say it was because she was sleepy. She would complain about headaches and stomach pains which were probably caused by her substance use. The list goes on. I told her on several occasions, if she wanted to be with another guy, to just tell me honestly. I asked her point blank if she was having X with another guy. I asked her point blank if she was using D's. I asked her if she had hidden social media accounts. She never confessed anything. Not one thing, and lied slash denied everything until the very end. To this day, I'm not even 100% sure when exactly she started cheating. Hell, she might have gone to work there just to meet up with him. At this point, who knows honestly. If she hid this from me all this time, what else could she have been hiding? Even when I literally had pictures slash screenshots proving everything, she still lied through her teeth and made up stories. She would tell me I was the one and only, that I was her world, that she wanted a family and to spend her entire life with me. She would send me revealing pictures, saying they were for me when in reality they were for Tony. We would video chat, and she would show me her body and brag about how thin she was getting, and give me little shows all the while giving it all to Tony. In October, I let her know that this year I wanted to move in together and get married, and even then she didn't tell me anything. Then we get to worst part. How do I know she was trying to pin his baby on me? Well, she had always wanted a baby, and even went as far as lying about being on the pill, just so I would have X with her with no protection, but I never let it happen. So more than likely, she did the same thing to Tony, and well, since Tony is known to not be a good person, if he didn't want anything to do with the baby, she would need a backup. Me. In early December, she randomly one day started talking dirty to me, telling me how the first night I arrived, she really wanted to have X with me, but it had to be with no protection so it would be special. Sounds suspicious? She was always actually inexperienced, but suddenly she was talking about how she liked it hard, and how she wanted to ride me, and to not worry, she was going to welcome me in the best way. On December 28th, we were all good, talking about how soon we would be together and start a life together. Then on December 29th, she randomly texts me saying we need to talk, and basically tries every excuse under the sun to break up with me, but ends up saying she just wants a break, and that soon.
she would be back and we could talk. On December 30th, I found out everything and cut off anything to do with her. Then two days later on January 1st, she left and moved in with Tony. Why would Tony actually get together with someone when he had done the same thing to many girls before Rosie? Last time, we had contact she mentioned she quit using M, and was going to a blood work and test done. So what happened? Well on December 29th, she more than likely took a pregnancy test which came out positive, and probably told Tony, if he wanted to be with her, then she would break up with me, and if he didn't, well she would break up with him and let me get there without ever knowing anything. Now they are living together and probably going to marry soon. Or who knows, maybe she was just trying to decide which of the two of us she liked more than the other. Maybe Tony told her it was him or me, and to choose one. But either way, 4 plus years together, and she replaced me in like 4 months. So now here I am broken and left in pieces. I can't sleep at night, because of the horrible mental images of them together. I miss the Rosie I once knew, not the monster that is there now. M and bad influences changed her. The worst part is, I even feel a little guilty for everything that happened. In late September I had a chance to go to Mexico with one of my brothers, but I didn't go because I thought I needed more money. Plus, I thought, she waited on me this long, three more months is nothing. Perhaps if I had gotten there at that point, I could have prevented the cheating, and maybe gotten there in time to prevent her from actually getting addicted. I know I left her alone down there for a long time, but it's not like I wasn't there every day texting, calling, video chatting with her. There is no excuse for her terrible behavior or terrible life choices. I know at the end of the day, she's still a monster and she made all those choices herself, and she could have chosen to walk a straight path, confessed everything, or at least break up with me before starting to really cheat, but still I find myself wishing I could go back and go to Mexico then. She waited faithfully for years, but she couldn't wait a few more months? There are no excuses for what she put me through. I have thought about self-ending on several occasions, but I know it's only a matter of time before she collapses. She always had health issues, so I can only imagine what the substances are doing to her body. That's not even mentioning the people she got involved with. I'm on antidepressants and sleeping medication, and I start therapy on Monday. Now for the top advice. You told what would happen if she went there, remind when Tony cheats on her, leaves her, and then comes knocking on your door with baby in hand. That's the funny thing. I literally told her exactly what would happen if she went there, and she said no, that she isn't that type of girl. But look at what happened. And she ain't getting crap from me ever. You have no idea how much better off you are. I know you are feeling bad, but think about this, that baby is screwed. She going to be a crack baby, and her mom is the definition of a crack who. It sucks what this do to people, but you warned her and she choose this path in her life. Forget about her. It was most likely going to end up a dumpster fire eventually. Daddy problems and an abusive upbringing, is not your role to fix. The issue with mental disorders brought on by trauma is that, while they are not at fault for the trauma, however, it certainly is their fault if they don't get help. She doesn't want your help, and is a lost cause. Go forward with your life and leave her behind. And don't worry about Tony, he's already a loser. One of these days, he will be found in a ditch. That just how these things go. Trust me, I know. I grew up in a rough place, and once you get into that life, especially down in Mexico, there is only one way out. Death. Either by OD, D complications, health issues, gang violence, police mistreatment, etc. She chose her path, no one forced her to do anything. She made her choices. If you have any close friends slash family, reach out to them. There's nothing more you could have done. You warned her about that job, and she did it anyway behind your back. From then on, the version of her you miss now, was gone. Yes. I thankfully have a very supportive family that has helped me cope in this situation. As for her, I couldn't care less what happened to her. She endangered her life, as well as mine, by getting involved with that type of people. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.